I am taking a screenshot, so please turn on your camera. Can you see the slide? Hmm? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, well, hello everyone. This is uh, Dr. Mohammad Siddiqur Rahman from the Department of Statistics, Begum Rukia University, Rangpur, Bangladesh. And today I am going to talk about uh, some topics regarding introduction to econometrics. Okay, so this is the course contents or the lecture contents today. First, we're going to discuss about the typical definition of econometrics. That means what do you mean by econometrics okay then the second topics may be different type of different types of statement used in econometric analysis and definition of econometrics econometric data types that means what are the different kinds of data used in econometric analysis different types of econometrics and what are the goals of econometrics or what are the goals of an econometrician and finally we'll try to develop a model and the model can be termed as econometric model so these are the lecture contents for today's lecture so what do you mean by econometrics so literally interpreted econometrics means economic measurement so as i told you in the last class if you can divide the term econometrics, how many words you can divide? Two words. Two, Two words. words. Number one is economics. Economics and, and another is measure metrics. Measure metric. Was it economics or economic? Economics, sir. Economic. economic. And another one is econo. Another word is metrics. So lit literally, econometrics is meant economic measurement right so the last part matrix this is a really a greek word which means measurement right yes, sir. so the meaning of econometrics becomes measurement in economics right so could you please give me an example what do you mean by measurement in economics if you cannot yes, sir. Uh, could you please give me an example? What do you mean by measurement in economics? Measurement in economics. If you cannot know, just tell me, sir. We don't know. So I can proceed the next slide. Sorry, sir. I don't know. Okay. So suppose you are going to estimate the demand of, of the people of wrongful division, right? So what is the job? What is the problem? You have to estimate the demand of wrongful people regarding a particular product. Okay? Suppose the Haribanga mango, right? So then you have to measure, you have to measure, or then you have to use some econometric model, right? Do you think, so what, what is the, suppose, okay, I can give you one example, or maybe I can give you one idea about the relationship between two variables, right? Supply and demand. So I, I just tell you, there is a positive relationship between supply and demand. Is it really true Some every time? Yes, sir. Yes, so not every time, but it's true. Okay, so if I change the example, like there is a positive relationship between the expenditure and income. Yes, sir. This is true. Yes, sir. This is true. Okay. This is true. True. So if you are asked to calculate or estimate the uh, average income, average, average income of general people in wrongful division, then how you can estimate? So we can take a survey to collect data. You can do using the econometric modeling, right? So lots of theories 
are there like what is the theory behind uh, like uh, income and expenditure what economic theory tells you normally that means if your income is increased so it's a general tendency for the general people to increase the expenditure as well okay so yes, <clears throat> somehow you have to measure the economic phenomena first then you can use some statistical or mathematical model to measure the economic phenomena right so this is somehow like you have to use the econometric analysis to answer this kind of problem so the meaning of econometrics become measurement in economic problem so this is somehow a economic problem right because you are dealing with economic data you are dealing with income you are dealing with expenditure right so this is the way like somehow you can use econometric analysis to solve the problem or to measure the economic phenomena or economic problem anyway so uh, as i told you suppose take a look the examples law of demand says that when prices increase the demand decrease is it really true every time yes, when when prices increase the demand decrease and vice versa and the vice versa, versa. so this is very important like yeah this is a typical law or general law of demand that means when price increases right your demand is also decreased but there are some exception also so do you think uh, how can you how can you prove or how can you use the statistical or mathematical model for this kind of problem do you have any idea what is the difference between mathematical model and statistical model so regression model regression term exactly error is very important like like okay although the economist tell us that there is a normal law or general law of demand and the law is like when prices increases but the demand the demand decreases but there there might have some instances or there might have some incidents okay for which uh, like the prices increases but there is no way for us our demand is also increases so this this happens normally in the basic products basic product consider the rice rice production okay suppose the rice production is not that much in our country suppose in a particular year like the covid 19 pandemic right so due to covid 19 pandemic suppose our rice production is not that enough to fulfill our demand right then what you can do the price is automatically gonna increased because the supply is not that much that is that mean like you will not eat rice what do you think hmm? yes sir no sir of course we have to eat right of course we have to eat so these are some of the exception these are some of the error right normally occur in our life so this kind of error can disturb your model isn't it yes sir so that's why mathematical model cannot measure this kind of phenomena but if you can use the statistical model the statistical model please mute your microphone mr fahmir i told you to take a look of so so in that case how you can solve or how you can calculate the true estimation you can use the statistical model over there then you can measure the error so that's why statistical model is so uh, superior than the mathematical model in some cases or in some instances right so as i remember i told you in detail this topic in my first year second semester or maybe second year first semester course anyway so we verify this theory by drawing a regression the mathematical and statistical tool to analyze the theory right so when there is a law every for every economic problem there is established law right so to verify the theory we can use some mathematical and statistical tool what do you think this job is descriptive econometrics or applied econometrics 
because we are gonna verify the theory, okay, by mathematical or statistical tool. What do you think? This verification- Applied, applied sir. Of applied. course, applied. So there might be two categories. One is maybe descriptive econometrics, okay? Another is applied econometrics or descriptive means theoretical econometrics. It's better to say theoretical, Theoretical econometrics. Econometrics. So right. what is theoretical econometrics? Theoretical econometrics heavily relies on the mathematical theory. You understand? But when we're gonna prove or when we're gonna verify or where, when we're gonna apply the theory in real life, okay? How using some mathematical and statistical tool, then this job or this problem or this process can be categorized in applied econometrics metrics okay so in econometrics what we do econometrics in econometrics we use a set of mathematical and statistical tool that allow us to describe or test different economic theory okay so this is ultimately called the economic measurement that means you are measuring the economics throughout some established theory and sometimes you need to verify the theory as well either in regression modeling, right? Or some other statistical or modern approach of statistical modeling, right? Including time series forecasting, time series prediction or the machine learning prediction. Now the very updated of one. Are you clear about the definition? So what is econometrics? Econometrics is nothing but the economic measurement, right? What we do in econometrics, we use a set of mathematical and statistical tool or models, right? That allows, or that is used to describe or to test different economic theories. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So I think it will be clear in the next slide. Or So consider how we can explain this problem. We can use a normal function. So quantity demand. <clears throat> okay, so what is, what is your demand is equal to function of price, okay? So if you put the value of price or if you calculate the function of price, ultimately what you are gonna get, you can get the quantity demanded, right? So this kind of modeling, this is also a model, right? This is a mathematical model because no error is here. Anyway, this is a simplest form, form of an equation or model this kind of model or equation can be used to verify the theory between quantity demanded and the price of a particular commodity, okay? So this is the way you can analyze economic phenomena or economic problem. So ultimately econometrics will help you to get the result regarding the problem of quantity demanded and price. It's better to say the relationship between price and quantity demand. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So sometimes in our real life, if I ask you how many statements you have, qualitative and quantitative, the, although the both are like seen here, qualitative, I think there is a mistake. So. What do you think? Is there any, any other statement in your, in your life or the whole life? Whatever you say, either this, is, this can be categorized in qualitative statement or quantitative statement. What do you think? Yes, sir. Or in, is there any other statement? I don't think. You don't think, okay. So what econometrics can do, econometrics can convert the qualitative statement into quantitative statement. Could you please tell me anybody like, what is the reason or why econometrics is being converted? It's not being converted in actually, it helps to convert qualitative statement into quantitative statement. Could you give me an example or do you understand what I mean actually? Why econometrics convert? Why does the econometrics convert? qualitative statement into quantitative statement. Do you have any explanation? So it is easy, easy to calculate, sir, quantitative statement. How? Uh, sir, like uh, color, sir. Uh, color? 
red, green, yellow. Uh, that, uh, we can put, sir, uh, their value, one, two, three, like this. It's not really like that, but as I told you, as I explained you earlier, economic measurement, right? It, yes. it could be good if you use some economic theory related example, right? But yes. you didn't do that. So what is the follower? You are not, you are not a good follower right then. <laughs> anyway, uh, it happens. Anyway, so I am giving you one example. I am giving you one example. Okay. Suppose I tell Fami, Fami, there is a relationship between price, price and the quantity demanded of, of certain product. What do you mean by this statement? Okay, I can rearrange or edit the statement. There is a positive relationship. Okay, there is a positive relationship between supply and demand. What do you mean by this statement? Okay, I change another, another example. There is a positive relationship between an income and expenditure. There yes, is a, what is this kind of statement? Tell me first. So sir, this is, this is a positive quantitative statement. Quantitative, sir. Quantitative, sir. There quantitative is a, statement. There is a positive relationship between mm -hmm. income and expenditure. What is the type of the relationship? Positive, sir. Positive relationship. Oh my God, the statement is here. Either you have to say qualitative or quantitative. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Quantitative, sir. How quantitative? Sir, quantitative. How? Uh, sir, it depends on quantity. The numerical data. Numerical oh, data. Sir. Where did you find the numerical data? Did I tell you any numerical <laughs> data? No. No, sir. It's qualitative. Exactly. This is a qualitative statement, but... But we can convert it. Exactly. If yes, I can convert now, if your income increased by, by $1, right? Yes, sir your expenditure is going to be increased by 0.5 dollar yes sir and now it's quantitative now it's quantitative, quantitative. and for the applied purpose or to solve the real life problem okay to solve this particular problem there is no way to con of converting okay without converting without converting the qualitative statement into quantitative statement is very difficult to infer about the population, right? What is the demand of the population then? What is the statistics of population, right? Unless or until if you can convert the qualitative statement regarding the relationship between what? Income and expenditure, expenditure. into quantitative statement, right? So by nature, by nature, okay? By nature, although we have only two statements, Although we have only two statements, qualitative and quantitative, but quantitative statement is very important for infer or for estimate something, right? So econometrics does the same job. The main job of econometrics is to convert qualitative statement into what? Quantitative <laughs> statement, right? So let's see. Thus, and tell me, what is called qualitative statement? So in the statement where, uh, where there is no number or quantity, right? So this is called qualitative statement. Suppose there is, is a relationship between income and expenditure, right? So this is statement really, really a qualitative statement because there is no quantity, there is no number about the uh, statement, right? But if I can use the, suppose another example, income expects, expenditure, right? And the quantitative yes. statement, if the statement that includes number or quantity, that is called the quantitative statement. So if income increased by $1, then consumption will also increase by $1. So this is a statement really shows you the quantity of, of what? Quantity of uh, the, uh, consumption, so income, consumption and or income. income and Consumption. Anyway, this is a quantitative statement because this statement includes some quantity as well as the number, right? So these two statements are very important uh, if you want to really understand the economic theory, right? And also 
econometrics. Okay, so what economy is qualitative statement is more realistic than a qualitative statement? What do you think? Yes, is sir. quantitative statement is more realistic than a qualitative statement? What yes, do you think? Sir. I do. I think. I do think also. Right. I do believe also. Yes, so in short, in short. Econometrics is the study, right, of expressing economic relationship in number or quantity, and it will convert qualitative statements or theories of economics to quantitative statements. You understand or not? Yes, sir. Okay. So now we are gonna move some of the typical definition of econometrics. So if you can take a look over the picture in the right corner of my slide, right? So I think this gentleman, Garhard Tintner, right? He's a renowned Australian American economist, right? According to him, uh, literally interpreted econometrics means economic measurement, as I told you, but according to him, econometrics is a result of a certain outlook on the role of economics consists of the application of mathematical statistics to economic data to lend empirical support to the models constructed by mathematical economics and to obtain numerical results. So unless or until you convert the qualitative data into quantitative data, then it's really difficult to obtain the numerical results, right? Anyway, he told or he gave us a good definition, right? So you can follow the definition as well. And, and another two econometrics, Paul Samuelson, he's also a renowned economist, right? And he's an American economist. He told us econometrics may be defined as the quantity bit. He is more specific here, you see? Econometrics may be defined as the quantitative analysis of actual economic phenomena based on the concurrent development of the theories and and observations related by appropriate methods of inference. Is it really a difficult definition? I don't think so. What I discussed, everything is reflected in these two definition, right? Yes. The, the yes. Finally, finally, another gentleman, Mr. Gold Barger, right? In 1964, he also used definition. Econometrics may be defined as a social science, right? So you need to know the difference between social science, science, right? Or many other sciences or, uh, or arts as well. In which the tools of economic theory, mathematics and statistical inference are applied to the analysis of economic phenomena. And he told in a different way, but the conclusion is the same, right? So where you are gonna apply everything to solve the economic phenomena. So if you want to solve the economic problem or economic phenomena, of course, you need to use some models. These models heavily relies on the economic theory. Why the models relies on the economic theories? Because we are dealing with economic problem, right? And the models definitely come from mathematics and statistics. So when you are gonna use the statistical and mathematical model to solve the real life economic phenomena, right? Based on the established economic theory, this study you can call, this is called the econometrics. So I gave you, or I showed you in fact, uh, several definitions of econometrics from renowned economists around the world, right? So you can follow the definition or maybe you can create by your own, right? So this is the definition of econometrics. Did you understand clearly? Did you understand clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. If you not, if you cannot understand, please feel free to ask me anytime. Okay, sir. Please repeat, or we can discuss. Okay, we can discuss. So the class should be interactive. You can, you can tell me something. If you if you are not agreed with the topics I'm telling about, okay? Good. So 
this is very important because as a statistician, our main job is to analyze, right? So based on what? Based on the availability of data. So what kind of data are used in econometric analysis? So mainly there are how many kinds? I'm not sure, but I can start with the time series data, okay? Cross-sectional data, pool data, panel, longitudinal, or micro panel data. These are the four main kinds of data used in econometric analysis. So what are the data? I told you again, time series data, right? Time series, uh, cross-sectional, cross-sectional. Then the another data comes in the name of pool data. What do you mean by pool? Is this swimming pool? No, sir. No, no. sir. It's not swimming pool, right? So pool means you have to combine. You have to oh. combine. So how many data before the pool data are here? Two data. Two data. One is time series, another is cross-sectional. Yes, that means in some data, you can find the both data, including time series and cross-sectional. Then the data will be called pooled data. You understand what I mean? Yes. Tell me, Mr. Fahami, tell me, what is mean by pool data? Sir, sorry, sir. Okay, uh, Yasmin, sweetie, what do combined. you mean by pool? Combined exactly. data. The combination of time series data and cross-sectional data is called pool data, okay? Finally, panel data or sir, another... More more specifically sir please tell me i am combined data you. what what combined data sir combined data of time series and cross section okay sir okay. but we are gonna be clear in our next slides okay, okay. i'm gonna discuss each and every data in details in the upcoming slides okay so and the final one is panel data or the alternative name of panel data is longitudinal what is the pronunciation longitudinal Longitudinal data. Don't say yeah. longi. Don't say longi. Okay. Longi. <laughs> it should be longi, longi, longitudinal, longi. right? Longitudinal data and micro panel. This is very important, like longitudinal analysis. Longitudinal. That means the lengthy, lengthy study. Lengthy study. Suppose uh, I am gonna observe you. I am gonna observe you like during three years. Suppose first year, first semester, right? Then first year, second semester, second year, first semester, second year, second semester, third year, first. Right now you are in third year, second yes. semester. So still now you are being observed, right? Yes, sir. So when the same individual, okay, are being observed for a particular study and for a long time period, right? This is called the longitudinal study. Okay, longitudinal study most study. of the time like the infectious disease modeling right suppose we want to know the effect of social media how social media can have a good impact right to reduce the infectious disease how do you have any idea how social media can be used or can be in impacted to reduce the mortality or fertility rates of covid 19 pandemic do you understand what i mean yes sir Yes, sir. <laughs> so, sorry, sir. Please, I, I, yes, sir. Please. Uh, okay, I told you about the pattern and yeah. a definition or maybe some explanation regarding the longitudinal study. Could you please give me an example of longitudinal study in reality or the for the real life problem? Sir, COVID nineteen. Okay, tell me in details. COVID nineteen is a word. You have to explain it more. So like, sir, uh, when it was first uh, uh, arrived, uh, mm -hmm. from then. From then? Uh, sir, it is observed. It is being observed uh, now, till now. And uh, sir, <clears throat> for a long time, I think. OK. Now I can, I can modify your example, right? Sir. Fami, don't forget to record the video. So, is this recording recording on my screen or not? 
recording yes recording okay recording. so suppose social media we selected uh, 150 million people from bangladesh okay though those have less knowledge on covid 19 pandemic that means the prevention strategies okay and the control strategies they have limited knowledge that means the educational status is not strong enough right now we are going to observe and we give the internet connectivity to them right and we give the social media and we told them please try to follow the updates from the social media regarding the covid 19 covid 19 pandemic preparedness you understand so suppose in the first year first year we observe them in the second year we also observe them right in the third year we also observe them so this is a long study this is a long lengthy study and finally i think you are going to get some good positive result right maybe in the first year their awareness level awareness or knowledge level regarding the covid 19 pandemic is low but in the second year it might be increased due to the social media intervention social media intervention because we are gonna what we are gonna increase the knowledge level through the inclusion through the adaptation or through, or through the what should i say like implementation or intervention or using social media so how we change the behavior of general people or vulnerable population of bangladesh we change the society or we change the vulnerable societies or population using the social media intervention and how it was possible this was possible only a longitudinal study sometimes cross sectional study is not good enough sometimes time series study is not good enough but sometimes longitudinal study might be a potential study to reduce the epidemic or reduce the infectious diseases so every data have every in what should i say practicability right so every data have some rational some assumption as a statistician you should have a clear idea of each data right to analyze a certain phenomena or certain problem so this is the these are the four data commonly used in econometric analysis okay don't worry we are going to discuss in details in the upcoming slides okay are you clear i think you had a little glimpse of the idea regarding this four data sets okay or four data types what are the data then could you please tell me anybody how many data four data four data okay, four okay. Datas. okay tell me four data Time series data, cross section, cross section data, pool data, pool data, longitudinal, longitudinal data or micro panel data. Very good. So next, start with the time series data. What is time series? Time series is a set of observation, right? Okay, that a variable takes at different time periods. Mind it, different. time periods not a fixed time not a fixed time period you understand what i mean yes sir or could you please give me an example what is the fixed time and different time it's very easy just tell me just tell me somebody someone sir please repeat i can't hear Sorry. why you cannot hear every time no sir i told you sir, network so give me an yes, example right a time series data in a fixed time and different time <laughs> yes, consider sir, sir, not, 2000... sir, not sir not fixed, uh, fixed time. time data means uh, since 2010 to 2021 this is not fixed this is time series the fixed is only 2010 only 2011 only 2012 yes. okay. anyway that is the difference the question was i think very easy that's why i cannot answer sometimes very easy question <laughs> is not is difficult to answer right anyway so a time series is a set of observations on the values that a variable takes at different times different time consider the temperature data the climate variable temperature you are asked to collect the temperature data suppose the daily temperature so the temperature can be daily monthly right so you are asked to collect daily temperature data from 
2000 to 2000, 2021. Okay, so this is a time series data because you collected the data over a period of time or different time periods. You understand the time series data? Yes. Yes, sir. That means the data, the series of data must be collected from the different time periods, not in a fixed time period. That is the difference between time series data. So in the fixed time period, this is called the cross-sectional data. You understand? Yes, sir. So what is the difference between time series data and cross-sectional data? Tell sir, me. Fixed. Sir, cross-sectional data have a fixed time period. But time series uh, doesn't have time time time. Time. like that. If you can take, time. Okay, yes, sir? If you can wait for your friends. Like when oh, can sorry. when it's better to raise your hand, okay? So oh, that or, or no not it raise your hand, maybe many people can raise your hand. So when somebody starts, he or she has to finish first, right? Then you can wait. So this is the mainly the same uh, the main difference. Okay, so such data, that means time series data collected at regular time intervals, such as daily, uh, suppose stock, stock prices, weather reports, right? If you watch TV, every day weather reports is being telecasted or broadcasted, right? Weekly, like the money supply figures, monthly unemployment rate, consumer price index, CPI, quarterly GDP gross domestic product, and annually government budget, right? In Begum Rock University, every year there is a budget, right? From the government. So the budget of Begum Brook University Rangpur is being done annually. Okay. And this is also a time series data. Queen, Queen annually, right? This is every five years. That means the census of manufacturers, right? Or this annually, the census of population. Do you know the census of the population? How many years it takes place? Like after 10 years. Maybe? Exactly after. 10 so it comes from the decimal, maybe. Okay. Anyway, so this is a time series data when you have a collection of data and the data collected over a period of time. And don't be confused. When I say census of the population, this is definitely a time series data because census means like a lot of censuses, like different time periods, right? So I, I did not specify you or I did not tell you a specific year of the census. Rather, I just generalized it and I told you the overall census of the population that is really a time series data then go to the next slide cross section data are one or more variables collected at the same point in time such as census of population conducted by the census bureau every 10 years what is the difference between the previous example and this example census the census both can be cross-sectional data and time series data. It, up, it is up to you. It's up to you. You understand what I mean? No, sir. Please. No, it's sir. Fine. Okay. Suppose you have collected census from 2010 to 2021. How many census then you can get? 2000 to 2021? One. One, sir. Two. Two. Two, so this can be a time series data, but if you collect a particular year, only 10,000, uh, suppose census is being done every 10 years, right? So you are asked to collect like, suppose in 2010, there was a census. Then you, you are asked to collect that particular census. So that will be a cross-sectional data, right? You don't understand? What? No, sir. Yes, sir. Oh no, sir, please. Okay, we change that. We change the example. So in 2010, Farmer bought bought something, right? Suppose he yes. bought a doll, baby doll, right? Then then 2011, he also bought another doll. In 2013, he also did the same thing. Up to 2021, he is doing the same thing, right? Because he is fond of buying baby doll because he look like baby. Okay, <laughs> so, so so different time periods, Mr. Fahmid collected different baby dolls, right? If if I ask another seer to estimate the budgets, right? Or to estimate the total number of dolls throughout the year, starting from 2010 to 2021. What is the time of this data? What is the type of this data? 
Time Let series. Me. Time series. Time series. <laughs> then, and I asked another lady, a good lady or good friend of Amit, right? Suppose Pia. Pia was asked to estimate, not estimate, to inform me 2001 to 2010 data. That means 2010 data of FAMIT because this is the starting year, right? So what is the type of this data? It's a cross-section. Cross-sectional data. So this is the difference. I'm not going to tell you details. This is a very simple logic. So combination of time series data and cross-section data are called pool data. So in some data, you will find the same pattern. Time series and cross-sectional. Then the phenomena will be called pool data. Don't worry. We a, 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 an example is waiting for you, maybe in the next slide. So consider these examples. Could you please tell me anybody, or could you please explain this table? What is the data about? Tell me quickly. Take a look and tell me quickly. Sir, egg production. Egg production. Okay, egg, egg production. US, egg production in United States of America then? In which year? 1990, 1990. sir. 1990. No. Uh, 1992, 1991. Exactly. 1992, 1991. Mm -hmm. So, how many variables are here? Uh, two. So, price per dozen. Hey, take uh, a look carefully. Sir, four variables. One, two, three, four, five. I can see five variables. You say two variables. Why? Five. For, sir, sir, sir. Yesterday, I didn't. <laughs> anyway, uh, four variables is also correct, okay? Mm. Because we already uh, like numbering or we already converted, right? The variable into number y1, y2, x1, x2, okay? There are four variables starting from y1 to x2. And these four variables, right, represents the data in 1990 and 1991, right? So y1 denotes the x produced in 1990, y2, X produced in 1991. X1, the price per dozen or cents in 1990, and X2, price per dozen in 1991. First, tell me table 1.1. What is the type of this data? Time series data, cross section data, or pool data? The whole table. Sir, a time series. Okay, I am taking another answer from another one. Someone Wait. told me time series. Who told me time series? The pool data, sir. This is okay. Another guy told me pool data. Is there any other answer? Okay, the answer already I got. Okay, first lady, tell me why you told me this is called the time series date. So in individually per year, sir, so 1990 and 1991. Mm. That's why, sir. Tell me in details. Only we are. Tell me in details. You are correct, but tell me in a very good way. Sir, indiv individually time, sir. 1990, sir. You can and tell like this. You can tell like this. There are many variables. You have to specify the variables as well. You can tell me like this, sir. Egg production and egg prices, right? Yes, sir. Yes, egg sir. production and egg prices. Price. In 1990 and 1991, 91. right? Per yes, year, per year, per year, each yes, year, sir. each year. What is the type of this data? Each year. Yeah, what is the type of this data? Sir, in, time series, sir. Oh my God! In each year, how it could be time series? So each year, the each year cross section, sir. Uh, 1990 yes. and 1991. Then, sir, say it's time. You are okay, but you are confused. Anyway, if we consider 1990, suppose 1990, egg production and egg price. What is the type of this data? Cross section. Cross, cross, cross section. sectional. Now, yes, now our concentration was in the year only year. That means yes, either 1990 or 1991. Now you can turn your concentration or you can convert your concentration in the state, different state, different state. Now I am asking you how many state, states are here? Maybe 50 states, 50, total 50, 
okay so tell me for each step okay for each state what is the type of this data Because. for each state that means uh Is no, no. Try to think logically. Okay, don't uh, answer me very quickly. Uh, what is the question? The question is for each state. For each state, I told you x production and x price. For each state, what is the type of this data? Oh my God! Sir, may I? You Sir. can. Anybody can do. Just raise your Sir, hand and. Cross section. The cat categorical. I think. Oh my God. <laughs> Our today's sir, topic sir. is either cross-sectional, either time series, full data, sir, or penetration. Sir, I think sir, you told based on the uh, state. Don't think too much. Okay, don't think too much. Hey, I told you the state. Okay, the first state is Alaska, American state, Alaska. Okay, oh, tell sorry. me. Sorry. Okay, for the first step, suppose there are many variables. Okay, suppose egg production and and egg price. What is the type of this? What is the type of this data you told me? The pool. Pool. How? The combination of these three. Don't think too much. Okay, answer me according to my question. This is a time series data. Oh my God. Okay, I am giving you the example. The answer is. Time series data because Alaska state represents not only year 1990; it also represents 1991. Okay, so I told you the state. Okay, every state, suppose 50 state, it represents not only single year; it represents two years data. So in different time periods, so the state represents different time. That means 1990 and 1991. Egg production and egg prices. So this is called time series data here. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. Now, now it is clear. Now it's so, clear. Yes, sir. So two important things from this table: per year. Per year is called is not called per year is a type of cross sectional cross -section. data, and per state is termed as time, time series time data. Series. But What is the whole table represents? That means two possibilities here, either time series or full data. Full data. So overall, the table is called full data. data. Why? Because these fifty states represents time series data, data, and the year and also represent uh, cross, cross section. So this is a typical example of full data. Now you clear or not? Please, yes, sir. sir. Okay, thank you. Next, another example for you. Now tell me. Now tell me about this data. First, tell me this exercise one point nine one. What is the type of this data? Time series. Sir, time sir, series. So overall, the data is for overall the data is pool data. Exactly. The overall oh. the data is pool data because. You tell you told me pool data. Now explain me which one is time series data and which one is cross sectional data. Sir, 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 per year. Per year. Yes, sir. Cross okay. section. Cross section. Very good. Cross section. Sir, if, sir, and if, part. Okay. Part. When you tell me, try to explain me something. Okay. Suppose you are telling per year. What do you mean by per year? Per year what? You have mm. everything here. So nineteen seventy three to nineteen seventy seven, nineteen ninety seven. It is per year for a individual country like nineteen seventy three for Canada. Exactly. Three to nineteen ninety seven. It's sir cross sectional. Mm -hmm. But if we uh, consider nineteen seventy three to nineteen ninety seven, then it is uh, time series. Okay, everybody is correct. Try to tell me in a very good way, in a descriptive way, because you have everything here. You have CPI, consumer price price index. You have seven industrial countries. Okay. You have also a time starting from 1973 to 1997. Okay. Okay. So tell me in a very good way. That's the problem of statistician. You are not good in interpreting anything. 
you are telling me example but you are telling me half you just tell me sir year what is the about the year year of what and you are telling me about the countries what was about the countries you understand <laughs> my query the tell CPI me the in the seven country. industrial countries sir sure. so <clears throat> cpi in for the seven industrial country for a single year for a Single. single year can be termed as cross sectional data yeah. but yes, for the sir. time series it could be cpi for what for a particular country Canada. particular Canada. country particular for country. each country no, sir. for exactly for each country starting from 1973 to 1997 can be termed as time series data so in the pool data 175 observations are here and okay so yes, this is actually a pool data, data. example of a pool data anyway thank you so i already discussed this uh, data longitudinal so this is a special type of pool data this is also pool data in which the same cross sectional units say a family or farm is surveyed over time you remember the example i just told you a few minutes back the important yes, thing is that the same cross sectional yes, unit cross sectional unit say a family or a farm or a society or a division or a country is surveyed over time over time so here the concept is cross sectional and time series data both data are used but the condition is that it must be surveyed over time you understand suppose the us department of commerce carries out a census of housing at periodic intervals at each periodic survey the same household you remember the same household this is important or the people living at the same address is interviewed to find out is there any change in the housing and financial conditions of that household since the last survey by interviewing the same household periodically the panel data provides very useful information on the dynamics of household behavior so i also introduce one example like the covid 19 pandemic and social media intervention so for the social media intervention longitudinal study is very useful to change the society okay to make the society more knowledgeable or more what more aware of regarding covid 19 pandemic okay so this is called the longitudinal study or longitudinal data or panel data or micro panel data right it's not really study sometimes you can convert or you can change the topic study because in study, the whole process, like starting collecting data, analyze data, the whole process could be studied. But data is normally data and collection of information, right? So you can tell study or you can tell data based on your own definition. Okay, clear? Are you clear? Yes, sir. So there are four types of data used in econometric analysis. Number one is time series data. Number two is cross-sectional data. Number three is pool data. Is nothing but the combination of uh, time series and cross-sectional. And finally, panel, longitudinal, or micro-panel data. Okay? Clear? Sir. Yes. So problems of data. Now you have data, but what do you think? Everything is like have some problem right so the your data suffers from many problem mostly in time series data there is a problem okay the problem is called stationarity problem have you ever heard the word stationarity hmm? no sir you, you yes, never sir. heard you you ever heard the mean and variance of something like the mean and variance yes sir sir what is what is mean and what is variance what is the difference between means, mean and variance? So variance is the squared deviation from the don't, mean. Don't don't tell me like this. Don't give me any bookish knowledge. When you will set an example to the layman or the normal people, right? Try to explain in a very good 
do you think if you can use this definition to the bangla student department students from bangla department will they understand anything no sir anyway sir. mean okay tell me tell me quickly uh the difference between central value and any other individual value it is uh, maybe variance and mean is the average number okay for the mean is correct average average or average right so what is variance you tell you told me one good word average everything can understand average is good the dif difference between uh, mean value and the specific uh, sample value this is also quite accurate this is also quite good anyway i am not okay try to study more okay this is not my job to make you learn about the mean and variance here so tell me suppose okay forget about the variance consider the variation variation okay is quite same thing so mean and variance suppose you have a data starting from 2010 to 2021 or 2010 to 2021 okay tell me you are asked to analyze the trend do you know the trend what trend trend of the data trend means what pattern okay suppose you are suppose okay you are being observed covid 19 pandemic from december 2019 to till now okay when covid 19 started do you know yes sir when uh, 31st december 2020 in china the 2029 okay. 31st december okay 31st december 2022 now today is 27th yes. october october 2021 okay so you have a data of covid 19 incidence or mortality rate or fatality um, fatality rate as well okay or the incidence rate now you are asked to forecast forecast the covid 19 incidence rate in 2025 2025 then my question is what is good here the mean and variance from 31st december 2022 27 october 2021 in this period if you can calculate the mean and variance of covid 19 incidence okay so what is the good thing is here mean and var suppose mean and variance constant do you do you know the meaning of constant constant means same same same, same. okay so i am giving you two option suppose the pattern of covid 19 incidence in the aforementioned period same number one option number two option is the pattern is different that means mean and variance you got is different or differ from each each month to another month what is the good option for you you understood my query or question or not ami banglay boli ami tomake dui ta option dilam যেহেতু আমাদের উদ্দেশ্যটা হচ্ছে উদ্দেশ্যটা হচ্ছে দুই হাজার পঁচিশ সালে কোভিড নাইনটিন এর ইনসিডেন্স রেটটা কেমন হবে সেটা ফোরকাস্ট করা বা প্রিডিক করা ওকে সেক্ষেত্রে আমাকে একটা হিস্টোরিক্যাল ডেটা কনসিডার করতে হবে হিস্টোরিক্যাল ডেটা বা একটা প্রিভিয়াস ডেটা সেট আমরা দুই সালের থার্টি ডিসেম্বর থেকে আজকে পর্যন্ত আমরা ডেটা তোমাকে একটা ডেটা দিয়ে দিলাম এবং এই ডেটা থেকে তুমি আজকে বললাম তুমি একটি প্যাটার্নটা দেখো প্যাটার্ন দেখার জন্য আমরা দুইটা মোস্ট কমনলি ইউজ মেজার্স অফ সেন্ট্রাল টেন্ডেন্সি ইউজ করতে পারি একটা হচ্ছে মিন আর একটা হচ্ছে ভেরিয়ান্স নট অনলি মেজার অফ সেন্ট্রাল টেন্ডেন্সি ডিসপারশন অলসো সো এই দুইটা স্ট্যাটিস্টিক্স তোমাকে কিভাবে হেল্প করতে পারে এখন তুমি পেলে মনে করলা মিন এবং ভেরিয়ান্সটা কনস্ট্যান্ট ওভার দা মান্থস এটা একটা সলিউশন আসতে পারে একটা সলিউশন আসতে পারে মিন এন্ড ভেরিয়ান্স ভ্যারিজ ওভার দা মান্থ নাও মাই কোশ্চেন ইজ হুইচ ওয়ান ইজ গুড ফর ইউ Hey, tell me quickly otherwise i can the I can... mean so and maybe be variance sir huh? <laughs> no i told you the question oh my god the not very only sir call data ta good hobe data ta good hobe acha constant mane hocche same mone koro prothom mashe covid hoyeche 30 jon 
পরের মাসে মনে করো ত্রিশ বা একত্রিশ বত্রিশ কাছাকাছি ঠিক না তারপরের মাসেও কাছাকাছি দিস আর কল দ্য কনস্ট্যান্ট কনস্ট্যান্ট প্যাটার্ন অফ মিন অ্যান্ড ভেরিয়েন্স তাহলে তুমি যদি এরকম কনস্ট্যান্ট প্যাটার্ন পাও তাহলে কি হবে দুই সালের জন্য ফোরকাস্ট করা তোমার জন্য সহজ হবে না टिकली स्टेशनारी then the time series data is called stationary time series data okay stationarity yes. means mean variance constant okay yes and, and non stationary means mean and variance is not constant so the inconsistent variation or the inconsistent inconsistent mean and variance is called what comma non stationary non stationary and the constant mean and variance is called what फोरकास्टिंग good so there are many methods or there are different methods of converting non stationary time series to stationary time series data so you have a course in time series uh, forecasting analysis and forecasting in that course i think you will have a good understanding and good learning how can you convert non stationary time series data into stationary time series data this is very important and this is the basic step of dealing analysis okay of a good analysis anyway cross sectional data have another problem okay and it is called the heterogeneity i think you already know the heterogeneity so why what do you mean by heterogeneity so <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> try to try to uh, listen your friends first okay your friend talk first you have you have to respect your friend obviously sir the lady tell me told me not homogeneous or not same exactly heterogeneous means not same i told you you already know about the cross sectional data okay and i am telling you there is a problem with the cross sectional data and the problem is called heterogeneity what do you think why heterogeneity problem occurs in cross sectional data hmm do you have any explanation or idea anyone anyone can tell me no what sir sir please ask again <laughs> i told you okay what i told you already how many problems right now we discussed so far the two problem two problem number one is called stationarity stationarity problem number two is called heterogeneity heterogeneity so stationarity problem occurs in what kind of data time series data sir time, time series, data. series data and heterogeneity problem occurs in what kind of data cross sectional cross sectional data. 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 data so uh, my question is i think you already understand about the stationarity issue okay because stationarity means mean and variance if you are calculate to mean and variance do you think you can calculate the mean for only single year is it possible Yes, oh sir. no, sir. Suppose one value for one year. Is it possible to calculate the mean and no, variance? No, no, sir. No, sir. Exactly. So stationarity issue will not come for the cross-sectional data because cross-sectional data is collected for a single year or a single data point. Okay, and for a single data point, you cannot calculate the mean and variance. Okay, so stationarity problem will not arise in 
cross sectional data is is it clear or not yeah clear sir is it clear so what problem arises in cross sectional data the cross sectional data heterogeneity heterogeneity okay the pattern will not be same here also okay so there might be many reasons in fact there is no specific answer but you can explain your answer in different way okay suppose in a particular year we are doing a survey we are doing a survey particular year particular year so heterogeneity comes i th i think you should think a lot okay try to think and in next class you can give me the answer i am not going to elapse or expand or spend a lot of time regarding this issue okay this topic is left for you try to learn more okay and you can give me the answer in the next class okay why heterogeneity problem occurs in cross sectional data and not in time series data i already gave you the answer uh, sir heterogeneity so heterogeneity mainly occurs due to outliers i think okay think think and you can explain okay next what is the type of this data time series how how do you know sir there because sir ekhane sir range ache dekhen sir suppose 2200 theke 1200 ache ebong ekhane am dekhte pacchi je shunno theke shuru kore 95 ache ekta trend follow korte ache sir ekhane kichu dekhen time the answer is that the data recorded or shown over a period of time starting from 1951 to 1999 okay maybe from january to july and this data represent the money supply in united okay. states okay this is a problem or the, the answer is correct this is a time series data now tell me what is the trend type of the trend what is the problem of this data now tell me okay i just discussed in the last slide what problem sir, arise in time series data sir stationarity <laughs> stationarity is not the answer you have to tell me whether this time series data is stationary or non stationary so this is stationary non stationary data yes oh my god so what i explained few minutes back oh my god that is the you see the, the yes, logic you have to be logical this is really a non stationary data because the train is not constant over time it's changing yes sir okay? so if you can calculate the mean and variance definitely the mean and variance is also changed over time okay you understand why i am not going to tell you details figure one which depicts the behavior of money supply in the united states right the actual data are given in exercise 1.4 so you can check this data in the gujarati book as you can see from this figure the money supply shows a steady upward trend as well as variability over the years suggesting that this this time series is not stationary okay anyway it's a very simple thing but no one can answer the correct only one guy correctly answered this is a non stationary time series data okay next now tell me what is the type of this data cross section data why cross sectional tell me the answer because there is written in the headline cross sectional data right anyway this is really cross sectional but tell me the reason or ratio now why you are telling this sir, can per dozen you use right. sir this is the price per dozen of x uh -huh. oh really maybe there is no time here sir, right specifically bol se ekane price of there is no time here ekane bishesh dozen er kotha exactly this can be exactly okay from the data we see that we have some states that produce huge amounts of x okay some that produce very little this is not really this is not this explanation okay anyway this is a cross sectional you are correct your interpretation is correct okay and could you please explain this scatter plot the explanation is there some suppose this figure represents some states information of in united states of america in some state in some state okay there are huge amounts of x you see huge amounts of x and in some state there is only one okay so this is also the pattern some like you can see a normal plot and you can visualize you can see the pattern of your data that means what is the situation of x per dozen right in each state 
Okay. Anyway, uh, this graph really is not clear because there is no de uh, description of the variables are here. Okay. No problem. I think you can understand it. This is a cross-sectional data and the interpretation as well. So econometrics may be divided into two broad categories, theoretical econometrics and applied econometrics. So in theoretical econometrics uh, is also two kinds, classical and Bayesian, classical and Bayesian in both topics, right? As I told you earlier, in theoretical econometrics, you have to apply, apply some mathematical models, right? In, in applied econometrics, what do you have to do? You have to check or verify the economic theory based on a statistical or mathematical model. So I'm not going over details into these topics. So what are the goals of econometrics? To judge the validity of economic theories. I told you already, whether the economic theories are valid or not in the real world, we can verify this with the help of econometrics. The main goal is to judge the validity of economic theories. Another goal to give the numerical values for the relationship among the variables. For example, how many additional Coca-Cola will be sold in the market due to $1,000 spent on advertisement, right? So you need to have the numerical values for the relationship between the Coca-Cola sold and the price of the Coca-Cola spent on the advertisement purpose, okay? So another is forecast future. For example, we can predict how much sales of mobile phone will decrease if, we, if the government of Bangladesh raise VAT or tax on mobile phone by 1% in the next year. So these are the main goals of econometrics. That means you can judge the validity of the economic, traditional economic theories to you can have the numerical values for the relationship among the variables. You can also forecast the future, right? So these topics has been discussed already throughout my today's lecture. So I'm not going uh, to discuss it again, okay? I think you already have a good understanding of, uh, about the pattern, about the definition, about the objective or about the goals of econometrics, okay? So what econometrician can do, he or she can do three main jobs. He can verify the economic hypothesis or guesses the theories or economic theory. He can estimate the economic parameter, right? And finally, he can predict future economic outcomes, okay? So these are the main three goals of econometrics can, can do perform, okay? So what is an econometric model? Suppose uh, you are gonna estimate the sales of internet package offered by Grameen Phone of Bangladesh, right? So uh, you will have the data of sales figure and the internet speed. So internet speed might affect the sales of internet package. Are you agree with the statement or the economic theory? I'm telling right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a normal thing. Well, because I, I just recently took the Ambar IT or Ambar IT from Rangpur and I found it very good. And because due to the internet speed, internet speed is good. I took 20 Mbps, right? With the cost of 1,200, right? So I just consider one factor, internet speed that might affect the sales of internet package, right? Anyway, this kind of relationship or economic theory, sales versus uh, other variable, right? So this is the economic theory and this theory or problem can be solved using a particular econometric model. So this is a typical econometric model. So you can also say this is a regression model, right? Where Y is the dependent variable. This is nothing but the sales of internet package. It will, it, it depends on what? It depends on X. That means the independent variable, internet speed. And for the Y and X relationship, you can have some estimated parameters, right? So beta naught is nothing but the intercept parameter when there is no internet speed. What is the sales of internet package? How many sales of internet package? That will be given by the intercept parameter. But beta one, this slope parameter will be, will be given according to the internet speed. Suppose, for one unit change in internet speed, suppose for one megabyte, you, if you increase one megabyte, what will be the price or what will be the sales of internet package, okay? Or if you increase two megabyte, if you increase three megabyte, this kind of scenario will be given by beta one. That means per unit change in X, what will be the change in Y? That will be given by the parameters. But intercept, when there is no internet speed, what on how many sales you can expect? This will be given by intercept. And error, you are very good in error. Not only 
uh, internet speed is affecting the internet packages. There might be many things, right? Like the wrong Korean people mentality, maybe, okay? Maybe they are very biased with the uh, internet provider. If the internet provider resides in Rongpur, he, if he or she is from typical Rongpur region, maybe you can buy the internet. If he from Noa Khalila Borishalla, right? That means the BNCC people, maybe you cannot prefer to buy the internet from them. So there are many hidden, hidden problem that might affect also the sales of the internet package. These kind of problems will go into where? Into error term, you understand? So I am already explained the simple regression model. In another one, why the simple regression model? I am telling about the econometric model because this simple regression model is used for the economic phenomena, for the economic purpose, to solve the problem of the sales or to estimate the sales of internet package based on the internet speed and based on the error. So this is a typical econometric model, right? So econometrician or econometrics tries to get the values of red color A, B, and C. So uh, the estimated parameters or the error you can get using the econometric analysis because these will the main things uh, those things are used to explain the relationship between internet speed and internet packages are you clear yes sir okay if you are not clear no problem try to make it clear later on how by learning so this is the end of today's lecture right i would like to thank you very much for your kind attention for today's class and the topic was introduction to econometrics and uh, last but not at least try to have some fun with econometrics okay so that you can learn many things okay thank you do you have any question no sir if you I don't know. have any question right what you can do now <clears throat> if you don't okay. have any question what you can do now <laughs> can discuss Oh my. <laughs> I'm really sorry if you have any problem regarding the internet issues. I am not able to afford you, right? I cannot buy you a laptop. I cannot help you to buy a computer. I cannot buy you to get the internet, as I told you before, like the internet speed or many issues. I have not ability. I don't have any ability, okay? So, Mr. Sear, do you have any specific question? No, sir, not at all. ID 64, do you have any specific question? No. ID 14, no question? No, why? <laughs> why no question? Okay, Famith, what you can do, what you can do, you can give some bonus marks or raise some query or question today, right? As far as I remember, Famith also tried to give some answer. Arman, sell him, right? And Yasmin, maybe I forgot the lady because I didn't take a look of the faces. How many students today tried to try it, have tried their best to give some answer? Tell me the name. Pamir? Yes, sir. Lady. Start from the lady, ladies first. Lady, sir. Or Pamir prefers ladies. That's why maybe. <laughs> I do uh, 12, uh, I do 13. Uh, I did 12, who is I did 12? Sir, Roji, Roji Nakhanu. Roji, then, then, then. Quick, then quick. Sir, Yasmin Nahar, sweetie. Sweetie, ID? ID 13. ID 13, then? Uh, then I think. Uh, you think? Uh, ID 20, uh, Medha. Medha, did you try really? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where is Medha? I cannot see Medha. Medha? 20. Okay, okay, I, I saw sir, you all there. It's me. Thank you. Then, then next? Then, sir, uh, ID 44, Arman Hoshan. Arman tried to give many answers, but you have to respect your friends as well. Okay. Yes, sir. I will follow next. Try to respect your friends. Then Selim Mondol, I think, 49, Mondo, right? I think, sir. Uh, then sir Pia also, uh, 26. Pia. Where is Ashik? There is no Ashik here. <laughs> Ashik is here, sir. <laughs> where, where, where Ashik? Ashik did not try, right? You should follow Pia, okay, to have better learning. Yes, sir. That means why I cannot do, right? You have to do also. Try to raise me also, question. sir. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Farmid also. Ashik did not do, but Farmid did, did it. Okay, so congratulations to Farmid. I am really sorry. I cannot congratulate to Ashik. 
Anyway, any other else? Anyone? Anyone else? Hmm? I think, sir, no. So what, Famit, what you can do, you can create another column, right? The column name is bonus marks, okay? Okay. So sorry. this column will be used in every classes. So you can use the equal sign, equal sign. That means the function. So equal is equal. Today, you are going to give like maybe two marks for everybody, okay? Equal to two. Then enter, okay? In the next class, what do you have to do? You have to just sum up plus sign that particular mark. But from the next class, maybe I am going to give some more bonus marks. Who, who, gave, who is going to give me more answer? Okay, but don't disturb me. Okay, I, everybody can understand if you are disturbing. If you are confident enough, if you can study, then you can answer, right? But I'm appreciating and I'm appreciating all the answers, right? Try to give answer in a logical way, okay? And try to be careful, Mr. Sear, about the mute, unmute, okay? Sometimes it, I got disturbed, right? Because yes, I'm sir. talking a lot and uh, if suddenly I get some sound, right? It, 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 I feel I feel very disturbing. Okay, so yeah. try to operate in a very careful way. Okay, and it's a long time class. I am not sure how many hours we took. Maybe it's a long time. In fact, in online, right? It's difficult. So it's it's good to take a lunch right now. So have a good lunch, okay, and also have a good dinner <laughs> to, to tonight, okay? Because you you, you, you tried hard, mm -hmm. and in a nutshell or in a conclusion, have a nice day, okay? and yes. try to learn econometrics, okay? It's really an interesting subject. Time series as well. Never stop learning. And learning should be fun, right? Try to learn with, with some, what should I say? Like, try to be funny and try to learn, okay? Okay? I think it's a very easy way, okay? So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, sir. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Assalamu alaikum, sir.